Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. I'm super tired today. Yeah. I don't actually think I've been tired today. I think it's just late right now. Yeah. We usually record during the day, but we have had a crazy week. And our only options to record has been after bedtime. Or nap time, but nap time's moved around a lot. Nap time, it it really is hard to record a podcast during nap time. A nap time really isn't long enough. (sighs) Like nap time during the week is doable, but we have people with us so nap yeah. time because it's anyway, so variable yeah semantics guys semantics welcome back to oversharing this with the it. overbees we're the overbees both of us yeah well not really just kidding just me yeah i'm part of the overbee fam though yeah it's like the brand yeah you fall under the umbrella yeah the overbee umbrella i do just not legally matt's like in, in charge here Oh, wow. Yeah, he, he really puts it all together. Wow, my hair is really... And that's why you Aaron. know things are just really falling apart. They're falling apart? I thought we were doing pretty good. Oh, we're, we're doing better. We have exciting things coming up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like? On the pod. Oh, on the podcast. Yeah. Got it. I think in life. I mean, that too. We're traveling. Yeah. We have a lot of exciting we're stuff We're leaving our up. house. Yeah. Not to brag, but... Not sometimes to brag we leave or our anything, house. but... Not very often. No. Yeah. I wonder well, no, what I just realized. What? We need to figure out what we're going to do with the dogs while we're gone. I just figured we'd let them roam. I'm going to hire... Well, I mean, yes, we always hire somebody we'll to be at our house. We'll just put a bucket of food, and then yeah. they'll eat it all in the first two days, <laughs> and they'll get so fat that they won't need to eat for a week. Yeah, that's true. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay, talk to me about the aging filter. Uh, really, you're the expert on it. You're the one who had to make the yeah, TikTok. But you're the one that looked terrible. Oh, well, it turns out aging filters are garbage and they don't work. Not (laughs) because they made me look really bad. When I just said you looked terrible, Mm -hmm. I don't. Objectively terrible. No, no, no. Like a bad, ugly old man. I didn't even mean the way that it made you elderly made you look bad. I Mm -hmm. meant that for some reason, the elderly filter does not apply to your face. Oh, it applies and it turns it into a monster's (laughs) face. (laughs) That's not true. We had to go through so many photos to find one that would apply. Like, it it can't pick up on your hair. It did have a tough time with the hair. I don't know what that was about. I don't know if you guys have seen the trend, the cap cut trend with the the old filter that's been. And it's not like it was like, oh, this is a woman's face. It was like, this is Dorian Gray's face. I almost wondered if it could pick up on you being a woman instead of a man, if it would have gone better. It couldn't have gone worse. Yeah, but it wouldn't pick up on you as a woman. I tried. No, no. Mm-hmm. Even when it got my hair, it didn't do all of my hair. No, There was yeah. multiple times it was like, half your hair is even, gray. Even the one I posted. You had to fix and post. Well, no, but like your hair is not totally done. Yeah. Are you just going to yawn this whole podcast? Yeah, That's probably. Obnoxious. I. Can't. Come on. Are you going to point it out every time I do it? You're I'm, darn right I will. I do a pretty good job. Of as your podcast uh, accountability buddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Come gonna I'm gonna tell you. Buddy. Yeah. I love that. What's that from? I, I stole that. I definitely no had idea, but I love it. Accountability, buddy. Yeah, classic. Anyway, okay. aging filter looks terrible on me. Yeah, but it did start us on the discussion of because while it looks terrible on me, uh-huh. you didn't age at all. I aged. Okay, your hair turned like whitish blonde. I looked like my mom. Okay. You looked like you in like 10 years, but it's supposed to be like 35 years. Yeah. Or based on me, 100 years. But my mom's almost 60. Sure. I don't know if you look old at 60 nowadays. I don't she know what it means. She looks fantastic. Sure. So maybe I'll get lucky. Although I had had the thought this week, I am very much starting to age. Like I'm, I'm starting Not to me. get... It's not just fine lines. Well, I guess it is technically fine lines. I don't know how that works or what qualifies. But I'm definitely having more prominent wrinkles on my forehead. Like whenever I noticed my reflection in the rearview mirror today, I thought Mm -hmm. to myself, oh, I'm starting to look more, not middle-aged, but (laughs) you're really not helping here. (laughs) No, but I'm just starting to look a little bit older. Sure. But 
I don't know. I feel like my perspective on it's so twisted because so many people in our peer group do Botox oh, and yeah. filler and stuff yeah. like that, which I have no problem with. Uh, I don't know what you're supposed to look like at 30. I don't either. But again, I have barely an idea of time. So yeah, true. I and I've had heavy forehead wrinkles since I was like 12. So yeah, just part of my face. Yeah. You don't have a heavy, you have a single crease in your forehead. Well, the nice part is the lighting here is just blowing it out. So yeah, <laughs> looks smooth. Yeah. Good. Good for you. Um, anyway, yeah, I just think that's interesting. I don't think I'm going to be a Botox girly though. I've gotten it once. And you liked it. Yeah. I got it right after our wedding. I don't think I did it before. Yeah. You were waiting. You wanted to wait. Yeah. I got it right after our wedding. Because you were worried if it went poorly. Right. You were going to have Botox for all of our wedding photos. bad Botox. Yeah. yeah. Uh, And I did. I liked it, but it's so expensive. Yeah. And uh, I, (laughs) this is how I described it to a friend this week. We were talking about it. Again, no problem with it. But I was so shocked at how expensive it was and how frequently I would need to get it. And my thought is, like, I don't know, let's say on the low end, you spend $500 a year doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when I'm... That seems really low. It it is really low. Let's say $1,000 a year. Is that like DIY? I have no idea. (laughs) Uh, Some people hardly use any, Sure. you know, like they can get away with... But let's say $1,000 a year, Mm -hmm. sure. That's easier math, you know? And I'm 30. And so let's say when I'm 65, so... That's $35,000 I have Mm -hmm. to spend on other things in those 35 years. So, like, I feel like I could go on an extra vacation every few years or, you know, Mm -hmm. like a a cool vacation. Sure. I'd rather do that. It seems more worth it. To me, everybody's I haven't investigated it personally. And some people probably just have the, you know... uh, liquid cash money to do both and that's yeah. great they're just doing it overseas maybe it's cheaper Ooh, mm, two for one i don't know you're gonna get done and i don't know anything about anything no that's true we're definitely not experts on that subject but no but i really liked it when i got it yeah it, it looked great yeah the person who did it did a fantastic job supernatural i get Wasn't the hype like, yeah yeah you did, it wasn't something that was really noticeable yeah just but spending the money made me feel bad yeah. Kind of like whenever I was a kid. Fun fact about me or story about me. It sounds like it's going to be sad. I bought Pokemon. Uh, Cards? Sapphire. Oh. And I played all of Pokemon Sapphire. And it was awesome. <laughs> and then I really wanted to go back to the store and get Pokemon Ruby because I thought they were different. You know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nobody informed me. It's the exact same game. Yeah. The game is the same, but there's like six different Pokemon right. it's that you get instead. It's literally, and I asked the person at the Target. Mm-hmm. I said, I remember it was at the Target in Springfield, Missouri. I said, is it the same game? And they were like, well, no. And I was like 10. I was little. And I had saved all my money from mowing and I bought it and I got in the car and I ripped it open and I I, I didn't rip it open. I very carefully unboxed it. Yeah. Put it into my um, Game Boy. Turned it on and it was the same game and I lost it and my mom tried to take me back in to like exchange it or return it and they wouldn't let me because the plastic had been removed from it Mm -hmm. which i feel like nowadays they would definitely let you return that yeah i don't know it seems it seems like walmart they would but true i uh i was devastated and my dad made me keep it like like my mom was like (laughs) why don't we just like give her her money back? And, like she's like really upset. And my dad was like, no, this is a lesson learned about finances and <laughs> money management. And let me tell you, it stuck with me. Nothing to do with money. I think uh-huh. I was just traumatized. Yeah. Actually, I guess kind of to do with money. I just never wanted to spend my money on anything ever again. Mm-hmm. Cause it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Cause yeah. what if I didn't like it? I also, when I was a kid at the mall, one of the kiosk people conned me into <laughs> buying something when I was a kid. And then everybody made fun, all the adults in my life, like, made fun of me for getting, like, pitched at a mall kiosk and spending my money. And that made me feel really bad about myself, too, (laughs) even though I liked what I got. 
It sounds like the adults in your life bullied you about money. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> that wasn't my parents that... Uh, oh, different adults. That was just adults that. That was a friend's parents that like they wow. were really not nice to me about wow. it. They were joking, like they thought it was funny. I was traumatized. Got it. Got it. You were embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. They were making jokes, and yeah, got I was it. so got embarrassed. It. Yeah. Do you want to call out like it was 2013? Whoever worked the electronics counter in it Target. It was before that. I was no. Like, I'm talking about your your Pokemon game. 2013. <laughs> I was 20. Or 2003. 2003. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I was a junior in college. <laughs> and she was bawling about Pokemon Ruby. Like she was home for a week and then had to go with her. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. A little bad math there. 10 years. I thought it was going to be so simple. Born in 93 plus 10, that's 2013. I don't I'm know what's so difficult about this. I died at the this. idea of me as a junior in college going to Target, buying a $30 game, and crying in the car to my mom and dad. In that case, my dad should have absolutely made me keep the game. That's true. Oh, that's so funny. I'm actually <laughs> crying, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you know. Yeah, worth it. <laughs> you can see it, but sometimes I feel like I need to narrate things like yeah. that. Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, other big updates on our week. Yeah. I have a huge life update. Huge. And I don't feel like I really said enough on stories about this. Okay. And I should have. Two friends of mine came over and did maybe... I don't think they know how much they did for me, but I have been just deep in the depths of not being able to catch up on clothing chores. So mm -hmm. laundry, getting clothes hung up, put away, donating things, getting them moved out of the house. If it is like to donate or to Poshmark, I never Poshmark because it stresses me out. Yeah. Because uh, you can't muster the energy to donate it much less. Posh market, sell it, yes, package it, ship it, yeah, and, and so, do that in a timely which fashion. is a total privilege. But I, oh man, it just wears me out. So, anyway, I, I have just slowly but surely those chores have been stacking up for it's been well over a year. Uh, and it had just gotten beyond ridiculous and it was causing me a lot of anxiety in my day to day life. And well, I feel like your environment really affects you so I mean, badly. I think that. That's a universal thing to a degree, yeah. but I feel it's very distinct with you. Yes. Very. Like, I I don't like clutter. Mm -hmm. I don't like a mess, which anybody that's been in my house that's listening to this right now is like, really? Hmm, <laughs> interesting. Because your house is pretty cluttered and messy. <laughs> uh, that's a very, like, how my house looks is usually a very good depiction of how I'm doing. Gotcha. Uh, especially my bathroom vanity. Oh, okay. I, I think that's because that is the easiest for me to keep up. Like it comes the most natural for me to have it cleared off. Mm -hmm. So if it's not cleared off, either I left hectically and it was stressful. Sure. Or I'm not in a good spot. Most of the time, my vanity is clean. Okay. Interesting. You'll start paying attention to that now. Yeah. You don't notice. You've been mentally unwell for some time, I guess, so. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you can see my vanity from here, can't you? I cannot. I can oh. see the shower, though. Okay. Well, I, I'm i pretty sure it's completely cleared off. <laughs> I think there's clothes on the counter. Oh, okay. Well, that's because my laundry hamper hadn't been in there, so I got in a it's bad It's been habit. in there for uh, four days. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Regardless, <laughs> Matt's over here to just hang me out to dry about everything. Uh, Somebody's got to keep you honest. Yeah, and it's me. That's my Podcast issue, police is <laughs> being honest on the internet. My two friends came over, and they spent five hours of three of us. Yeah, working. I didn't tell them any of this. They didn't know how much of a problem it was for me. I don't think they probably walked in and were like, "Oh shoot, this is a problem." They got some clothes out of it though. Yeah, they did. I sent clothes home with them, but everything is clean. Everything is hung up or put into drawers for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and my closet is completely organized other than I need to go through shoes. 
But all my shoes are put away. I just yeah. would like to get rid of some more shoes. I think that's fair. It's a huge deal for me. It, it's a big deal because it's been months since it's last been cleared out. Yeah. So, and I got rid of a lot of stuff because yeah. part of the problem is I just have too much, too much I years don't. and years of clothes that you're not going to wear again. But yeah. That you can't bring yourself to get rid of. Yeah. I get really sentimentally attached to clothing if I wore it to something or to, even if I'm never going to wear it again. Mm-hmm. And I do have a handful of pieces that I want to hold on to in order to, because my mom held on to some important pieces from high school. She didn't really hold on to anything from college, um, which she was only in college for. Yeah. Um, a short period of time. She did go back and finish her degree. Yeah. She got it later. Yeah. Which I'm very proud of her. of. You might have some pieces from that. Accomplishment. You know? Yeah. ah, That's true. It was a while later. Uh, but she held on to a few pieces from just, you know, when she was in her twenties and thirties that she's passed on to me. And I I thought that was really cool. I don't Mm -hmm. know if my kids will think that's cool or be interested in it, but if they're not, that's fine. Depends on how cool, how cool the pieces are. You know? That's true. I don't think my stuff will be that cool. <laughs> like mom's stuff is cool. She has style. Sure. I I don't uh, I don't think mine probably will be. I might have some things. Uh, but, I'm sure there's stuff in there. But anyway, I have a few of those. But I tried to really cut back. I'm rambling. It's just a huge weight off my shoulders. Like yeah. I keep walking into my closet, and it's clean. And I know that if I do a load of laundry, all I have to do is put that load of laundry away. Mm-hmm. It's not. And with getting rid of clothes, I think it helps you to know people and see that they're excited about getting stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not, like not just knowing them, but knowing that they have something they want it for or, yes. yeah, that's that's always good for you. So Yeah, I agree. That helps. Well, like I had this really cute, I loved it, matching set that were, it was a pink jean with a pink denim jacket oh, matching. Yeah. yeah. And I, when I bought it, I loved it so much. Never wore it. I mean, I wore it once. Oh, yeah. Like, together. I tried them on over and over again. Tried on the pink jacket. Tried on the pink jeans. Tried to style them with other things. The Mm -hmm. color just didn't look that... Like, it looked really good on me when I bought it because I was, like, peak summer tan. Gotcha. And and most of the times when I was grabbing it out of my closet, I'm not wearing a pink denim denim jacket and denim pants in... August. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. And so I just have never, I, I bought it and it was expensive. And mm-hmm. so I felt the need to keep it because it was expensive. And uh, one of my friends tried it on. It looked fantastic on her, way better with her skin tone and yeah. colors. Um, and so she took it home. And I was like, that made me so happy. Yeah, that it'll actually get some some wear. Yeah. yeah. I just, I have that, I, I go right back to buying the Pokemon game and I feel guilty and I feel the need to like, I'm like, I'm going to force myself to love this. Yeah. And yeah, anyway. But then it's December and you try and put it on and you're like, I don't have the skin tone for light pink. Yeah. Matt's closet's our next overhaul. Yeah. Yeah. That's Talk true. about somebody who had gotten rid of clothes. That's true. I don't know that I, I have a hard time getting rid of clothes. Yeah. Even if they don't fit you anymore. Mm, yeah what if i shrink (laughs) (laughs) what if my frame shrinks (laughs) yeah i don't think it's happening i could get a you know a serious disease my my bones start wasting away in which case i think we should just get you new clothes Uh, perfect i have clothes right in the closet that you know you can't find nor do you want to because you have a bone disease (laughs) and you're laid up (laughs) And they're probably like 15 years old in terms of like style. <laughs> yeah. It just, it doesn't make sense. It's like, cool. I You've can been wear... a big laundry boy though. I've done a lot of laundry. A lot. Yeah. I have a deep background in laundry. Yeah. You have kid laundry on lock. Since, yeah. Been doing the kids laundry, but I've done laundry since I was 12. You were younger. Th- younger you than that. Seventh grade. You think oh, that earlier late? than that. Yeah. Earlier than that for sure. I thought you were like nine or 10. Probably. Like fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. 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 It turns out early, early neurodiverse me wanted to wear like two of my favorite shirts. Yeah. They were black t-shirts. I liked them. I didn't want to wear any of my other clothes and I wanted to wear them every day. And my mom was like, I'm not washing these shirts every other day. Like I'm just not going to do it. But here's how you do laundry. 
Also, if you're going to wash your two black shirts, can you wash the other clothes? Here's our system for washing clothes. And so I just started doing, I mean, at least half of our laundry at the house, probably yeah. more. But your mom had said to me, she's like, Matt was a huge, he like liked <laughs> the laundry chore. I liked having the two shirts I wanted and like yeah. the pair of jeans I liked washed. That makes sense. Yeah. So I compulsively did that every like two days. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. And she taught me the system and I stuck to it rigidly because it made Wonder sense why. to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Things like that just make sense. Last so. big update of the week is we did our first ever Easter egg hunt with yeah. G because she could walk this year. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I pre- like was mentally prepared for how much fun that was going to be. Yeah. It was peak. <laughs> peak motherhood is walking around with your child for them to find eggs. Oh, that's fun. So excited. I think I was watching Rory while you did that. Yeah. We need to do it again. Like okay. she would be just as stoked oh, if we yeah. just hit eggs around the yard. Yeah, she doesn't and know what's going on. It was so much fun. <laughs> like it could be a weekly thing for us. She just <laughs> that's true. She'd just be it, like, Oh, it's it, egg finding day. Then it wouldn't be as fun. But she'd be really for, good. For me it was <laughs> But she'd beat all the other kids. Come next spring, yeah. kids a kids an egg hawk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fast as lightning out there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's we're gonna win goal. prizes. We are? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I, I we? assume Yeah, we're a team. Yeah. We we train her. Any good prize she wins is her <laughs> parents' prize. That's the kind of family we are. It's the Overbees. Right. Represent. Yeah. Yeah. Never go against the family. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yep. Perfectly done. Oh, uh, okay. So this week we don't really have a main topic or anything we're hitting because Matt and I have been hard at work. Yeah. Not preparing the house series that we're about to start. (laughs) You said hard at work and I was like, I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to call her out on it. Immediately doubles back on it. Got it. Yep. Well, I thought for sure you would call me out the moment I said it. That's what I was expecting. No, I was trying to go with the flow this time. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have the house series coming soon. That's something that a lot of you have asked us for. Uh, we are going to cover kind of our history in purchasing our first home, building mm-hmm. a spec home, and then decide making the decision to purchase and renovate this house. Yeah, We're going to uh, do an episode about the design process of this house uh, and the actual renovation, and then we're going to kind of anyway it will be a multiple episode series we will still be doing intro weekly catch up yeah you know all of our usual segments but the meat of every episode will be all about our home process over the last few years because you guys have lots of questions yeah so but if you have those questions i'll probably try and put a something up Mm -hmm. to to aggregate some thoughts on it but Mm -hmm. you know voicemails emails Anything house DMs related to me, yeah. uh, that you want. That's coming. Yeah. Uh, and so we just wanted to note that. But before we get into the usual segments, uh, sports. Sports. Well, I guess that is kind of becoming a yeah. seasonal segment is... Uh, this week in sports. Fantasy sports, baby. Yeah. I don't know if we should cover baseball every week. I don't no, know if that's... Matt's right. kicking my butt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my I team's was, tearing it up. I was doing pretty good. and Your team is actually still doing solid, but, yeah, but my I team's really tearing it up this first week. I wanted to beat you. Yeah, you're, but you're, you're above, you know, top middle of the pack right now. Top middle of the pack. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I wanted well, to fantasy win. Fantasy football, you'll probably get me. I had a bad fantasy football season yeah. this year. Oh, I won, didn't I? Yeah. Kind of. But with an well, asterisk? Yeah, things got weird because of... Uh, yeah, what, the, uh, What's his name? Uh, Damar? D- 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 no. Mm. Why can't I remember his name? Damar Hamlin? Hamlin? It's not Damar. Hamlin. No. I don't remember. Anyway. Anyway, the player that uh, had cardiac arrest. His name's totally escaping me. Anyway, that might be right. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh... That was really crazy. But it moved all the games that week. They had a lot of fantasy players involved. Yeah. So we had to, had to do some some maneuvering. Yes. Anyway, uh, Bad Dad, Mean Mom. I wasn't a part of you writing uh, 
some ideas down for this this week. Yeah, my big thought on this one, uh, our kids been wearing PJs all day a lot. Yeah. Um, as part of the laundry initiative and also the fact we haven't, phased out a lot of clothes that don't fit her in her closet so yeah. it's easy to look in there and go oh she has clothes and then I have no idea what to put her in. you go look at all those clothes and it turns out that they're six to nine month clothes and your kid's almost two that is something i've done a really bad job with that i feel like other moms have i'm gonna go with mean mom on that not bad dad i okay. think that's very mean mom not because you couldn't have done it sure but I, I feel like whenever, like around the time we had G and then when she was little, I very much wanted to take, like I wanted to handle organizing the closet and doing all of that. Yeah. And then I think I did a bad job. <laughs> I just, I loved watching videos of other moms do it where they have all the little placards and it's zero mm-hmm. to three and, you know, three to six months and it's beautiful. And then. Their kid magically outgrows one section of the closet at once, and they're folding and packing them into boxes. Just goes into a box. Yeah, and I was that like, that does oh, totally make sense now that you're describing it. So aesthetic and lovely. I'm gonna really enjoy this, but it turns out your child does not fit into a size at a time. It's depending on the brand. Like with G, there yeah. were so many clothes I completely missed fitting her because I was like, oh, that's three to six. And then all of a sudden, whenever she got to three to six in one brand, I'd be like, oh, I can put this on. I was like, wait, it's way too small. Or it's or one. it's nine to 12. Right. Like, yeah. And I, I feel like with Rory this time, I'm a lot better at holding something up. And regardless of what it says, like there are things that G has that say six to 12 months that I still put her in. Yeah. And there are things that say 2T that are too small for her. Yeah, for sure. It's all over the place. Yeah, that's always hit or miss too because it's completely dependent on the geometry of your child. A hundred percent. And the geometry of the clothes. But Right, but what I'm saying is it's not not mm-hmm. just that is even if they get to a bigger size, it's just like adults, I guess, too. Yeah. But uh they could fit into a three to six and a twelve to eighteen month, depending on the brands too. Yes. Yeah. At the same time. So you can't just pack up all the zero to three stuff whenever they get to three to six, you know? Yeah. Totally true. Totally true. So I did a bad job with that. And I'm sure that there I you know, I could have done better. Probably what I should have done, and this is the suggestion I would make to new moms, is making it a weekly or monthly habit. Uh, yeah. It, it makes sense. It, what I think would really work is if you had a box, you know, a uh, you know, Rubbermaid container that you you get a piece of clothing out and it's like, oh, this is probably the last time they're going to wear that or this doesn't fit. It moves in there Here's at the that problem, point. Because that's what I did. Okay. Here's the issue with that. They wear it. You know it's their last time wearing it. So you, you put it in the it. laundry. You wash it. You forget. Got it. Also, you put it in the laundry. You don't do laundry for three weeks. Right. Then okay. three weeks later, you're like, three weeks this works, right? Dramatic. We don't sure. wait three weeks for the kids' laundry. No, not hers, but, you know, <laughs> by the time it gets folded and you're, well, you're right. wrapping it all back Even up. It's three days. Also, yeah, and if you know it doesn't fit, you're not going to prioritize getting it back in rotation. Right. Yeah. So totally get it. that's the, the issue I ran into. So I think that it's more sense. of something that you need to go through the closet. Yeah. I don't know. Justifiable offense, I'd say. But yeah. it has been. Uh, I bet some moms are really good. Like that comes very natural to some people. Yeah. It's not us. No, that's... I'm, I'm good at rotating my own closet and getting rid of things. I'm good at getting rid of things out of my closet. Yeah. I know we just talked about me being sentimental mm-hmm. and I do have a few pieces that are that way, but I also part with things pretty quickly. You're much less sentimental now. You're sentimental yes. over things from 10 years ago. Yes. You're not like, oh, this is from uh, when G was six months old and I got this for whatever. No, I have a handful of mm-hmm. pieces that I wanted to hold on to and that's it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, I would say that that's bad or mean mom, not yeah. bad dad, but you know. Rory's been blowing out, but that's age appropriate. Yeah, very. Yeah. Also had yeah. his vaxes, so. Yeah. 
he's been he's been in turmoil. Yeah, and he honestly, he is not a big blowout baby. No, we had he's, one bad day. Yeah, he's been pretty. He's a chill guy. He's really chill. Yeah, he doesn't spit up, which no, it's great. G didn't spit up a lot, but he spit up. He really doesn't like a weirdly low amount. Yeah, and so that's been good. That's why he's bulking. Yeah. It's turning into a unit. We almost forgot Easter baskets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely almost forgot to do that. I think that's also mean, Mom. Again, not that you couldn't do it. Because, it, yes, I agree. Dad I, shouldn't be in charge of Easter. <laughs> no, I just page. feel like that kind of stuff, I have always been the mental labor and the physical labor on that kind of stuff. Not that, again, not that you couldn't do yeah. it. Yeah. But... Wouldn't it feel like you need to call me and ask my per- not permission, but like no, you need to call me and check consult. in if you were doing that? Yeah, and be like, did you already do this? Yeah, no, that's true. I think just more the tradition of it is more important to you. Yes, you've always you've wanted, and tradition and holidays are more your bad. Well, you're very anti magical experiences in childhood. Uh huh. Yeah. Not anti them having them, just you're very logical and very, uh-huh. well, you're like, I had no magic in my childhood and I turned out fine. <laughs> it's kind of your, Dinosaurs my parents were about as didn't wrap my gifts. They just came home like, do you want it or not? <laughs> and I turned out fine. I've never unwrapped a present in my I life. I love that gift. And I turned way. out fine. Yeah. That was when they got us a PlayStation. I know. And they were like, do you guys just want this PlayStation now? We were like, yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas us. It was awesome. Well, sometimes it works and it lands. But they had two very practical. Well, right. Boys. That was the dynamic of your family. <laughs> yeah. It worked, but I don't want that to be. I, want I think them that's to have fair. Fun. That's fair. Magical things. Like, did you ever wake up in your house and it had been transformed for the holiday or for their birthday or, you know, or anything like that? No, we were still excited, though. Okay. But My parents I get what you're never saying. did stuff like that, which is fine. I, I didn't feel like shorted Neglected. because they didn't do stuff like that. Yeah. But I had friends whose parents did stuff like that. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah. I liked that. I guess it depend, really depends on the kid. For sure. Because there are some kids who probably would not be. But I feel like our kid. I think it's so hard to judge down. too, because if it's something that happens in your family, you don't know any different. And if it doesn't happen in your family, what do you know about it hot take and i'm scared to say it because i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but i don't want to raise birthday kids birthday kids yeah like kids that are real obsessed with their birthday so sorry if that's you there is nothing wrong with loving your birthday no i have friends who love their birthday dearly and they go all out i don't know what about it puts a bad taste in my mouth It, it has it obviously has something to do with me yeah has nothing to do with you if you love your birthday is it too self indulgent for you no, I don't think that's no. it. I love that part of it. Okay. Because to me, the, the thing that I will say that's really positive about the people I know who love their birthday, big birthday people, is a lot of them will be like, I'm not going to wait for anybody else to plan something for my birthday. I'm putting together the dinner. I'm inviting the people. I'm letting everybody know that they need to celebrate me because this day's my birthday <laughs> and I love my birthday and I will be celebrated. Sure. And I love that. Yeah. I think that that's how you want it to be. Here for it. The thing that I had a really hard time with is birthday kids who didn't do that, but then were really devastated when people didn't gotcha. go all out for yeah. them. Yeah. Well, I think that kind of falls into a category in general that we've, it's especially a very specific scenario. But especially if we've gotten older, we've learned to embrace people who know who they are. Yeah. And that's very much that falls into this I'm a birthday person, but I'm not going to let you know that. Yeah. And it's on you to go big for my birthday. And if you don't, I'm going to be devastated because that's what I wanted. But right. I'm not going to. But I'm going to act like it's not what I want. Yeah. I'm not going to take a part in that. Yeah. But the people like, that are like, I'm a big birthday person and this is what we're doing for my birthday. And this is what's going to happen. You're like, I'm on board. Love that. Yes. Love to do what you want to do. Love the vision. Well, and like, I'm not a big birthday person. No. At all. Same. But my 30th birthday is this summer. And it is important to me that we do something for my birthday. Mm-hmm. And so I have said it to Matt a hundred thousand times. Yeah. I feel like I've said it a lot of times that I'm like, I know I don't normally care about my birthday, but I'm turning 30 this year and I would like to do something. Okay. And 
Are you acting like that's the first time I've said that to you? It's not the first time you've said that, but I'm realizing that that's not that far away. No, it's not. Yeah. I'm publicly reminding you. Got it. That's a no, good call. Not really. That's not why I feel I'm like you've saying been planning right things now. with friends. Here and there, like we have some things yeah. planned, but that's more because all of my friends are turning 30 this year. That's mm-hmm. not to celebrate me. That's to get together with friends and celebrate yeah. together one another. Okay. Which counts. I don't know. I'm talking about I want to be a birthday person. Like, I want it to be about me. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Which I'm not usually like. No. But when, when I had G, I had a full-blown meltdown about my birthday. That's true. I was 41 weeks pregnant, and I chose to get uh, induced at 41-1 because we were a few days away from my birthday, and I was terrified I was going to have her on my birthday, and I didn't want to share a birthday no. with her. Also, at, at 41-1, yes, you were like... that's what I'm saying. At 41-1, yeah. I didn't want to share a birthday with her. Yeah. That was just something I like fixated on. And Matt was like, you don't even care about your birthday. I was like, I know, but what if she does? It was weird. Yeah. You were hormonal. I was. Very hormonal. Yeah. I was. But was good times. Yeah. Also at 411, you were going to have to go in for daily monitoring. Mm-hmm. And you were like, I don't want to go into the hospital for daily monitoring. And then if something's off, kind of be caught off guard. Yeah. Not, not even off guard, but... Now you're at the hospital and we have to get everything to you. Yes. Kind of deal. So yeah. are you ready for Greg's Greg's Reads of the Week? Greg's Greg, Reads. Greg, 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 Greg's Greg, Reads. Greg. Greg's your dad. Greg, Just, Greg. We should always explain this segment because we don't, but we do. You explain it every single week. And every single week you're like, since we forget to explain this, which you did once, like <laughs> the third episode. And so you're, I, I don't get it. Because you have this whole, anybody that's listening, they know Greg's my dad. We rate the articles one to five on how much anxiety they give us off the headline. And if we've read them, we'll give you a little rundown on how we felt about the article. Have you read them this week? I've read very few this week. Okay. I There were a few that caught my interest that I wanted to go back and read. Mm-hmm. But this week's been, was busy for yeah. us like i had a ton going on i had meetings and i was filming and then i messed up something i filmed so <laughs> i had to refilm which was oh that was the whole thing only my fault <laughs> yeah so things were just kind of wild and we had a lot of doctor's appointments this week and oh we did yeah jumping between i had my follow-up appointment we had rory's pediatrician appointment mm-hmm. we had anyway there were just there was a lot yeah yeah and I, I haven't been, when there's a lot, I really neglect my phone, which is not good for my career. No, probably good for your mental health, though. Yeah, it's good for my mental yeah. health for sure. So, all right, go ahead. Did First you read, article. Did you read? Uh, I feel like I looked at some of them, okay. but I, I'm going to read these and probably forget that I did. All right, I'm ready. Millennials are sinking under the weight of their debts, adding a record $3.8 trillion to the pile last quarter. Here's what's driving that, plus three tips to get your head above water. That gives me a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Like yeah. five out of five. Yeah. Four to five out of five for sure. Yeah. It's uh, concerning. I didn't read it, but whenever this one, I do remember this one coming through and I did intend to go back and read it because I was curious what it uh, stated as the driving force in that. I think it's basically stuff is expensive. And okay. Like, That's what I was afraid need, I was going to say. You kind of need stuff. stuff. Yeah. I mean, not stuff, but they're like when food is expensive- your options are eat or not yeah. eat. Yeah. And so people try to eat. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Nope, that was just a, just a not a fun really, one to read. Yeah. yeah, that's stressful. So, trigger warning, late. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, here's another fun one. But stress here, can trigger. Applicable. Yeah, stress can trigger depression. And this is the reason why. You know, this didn't give me any anxiety. Like one out of five, mm-hmm. but not because the headline isn't, uh, it's a, has a lot of words in it that I feel like should scare me. Sure. But I also feel like I read it and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I actually felt the same way. Yeah. And one out of five for me because that feels self-explanatory. Yeah. Stress triggering depression. Just I don't feel like I need a reason why. No. Feels like stress can trigger, trigger depression. depression. Yeah. As Did you people, read it? No. I didn't read it. No, it seems like that if you get really stressed, that can make but you But I depressed. bet that was an interesting article. Like yeah, I, there's probably more to it. Absolutely. Someone probably wrote a very good article. Yeah. I think after we record, I'm going to go back and read the millennial article because I really did mean to go back and read yeah. that. Yeah. 
yeah, I think it's just costs are up. Yeah. You know, but if you need gas and food. The next one's really funny. And both Matt and I read it. <laughs> this was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, warning. Popular Easter candy contains ingredient linked to cancer and is still for sale. This did not give me anxiety, but it did make me giggle because the moment it came through, I knew. I knew what it was, too. I knew what it was, was going to say. Immediately. Guys, it's Peeps. Yeah, it's Peeps. It's red dye number four. Yeah, whatever red dye is in or there. Number two. I have yeah, no idea. Three, two, three, four, somewhere. You know, one of the dyes that's not good for you. Um, I don't think you should really be eating dye if you can avoid it. You know what? I have considered. I got mm-hmm. onto uh, Scrunchy Mom TikTok. Crunchy or scrunchy? Scrunchy. Mom? I'm not on crunchy mom TikTok. What's scrunchy? Scrunchy. So there's silky moms and there's crunchy moms. Silky oh. moms are the ones who do like, they buy all the gadgets. They, okay. everything's plastic, <laughs> not plastic, but you know what I mean? Like they're not crunchy. They're it's the, all little tykes. They're the opposite. Yeah. No, 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 no. They're like sad beige babies. Like it's oh. all aesthetic. Like not plastic you know? then. No, like they're, they're doing, they're doing things that will make it easier for them though. So, okay. Like all the gadgets, all the yeah. gadgets, fancy stroller, like, like a $250 bottle warmer or something. Right. Got it. it mm-hmm. But like plastic bottles, sure. you know, like just but all it's beige. this. Yeah. But it's beige. Uh, I am guilty of that. And then crunchy mom is like the extreme. Everything's glass, you know, because we don't want microplastics. Or like woven grass. Obviously, I'm describing very extreme ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Poorly. But then moms that fall in the middle, they call scrunchy moms. Like moms that do some from this and some from... Sure. You might use all glass bottles because you're scared of microplastics. Mm -hmm. But then you... I don't know. I don't have an example off the top of my head. I should have prepared. Yeah. But you buy Paw Patrol I toys. Up? I don't oh, know. I'm on Scrunchy Mom TikTok. What was I going to say about it, though? Uh, Peeps, die. Oh, dies. I got onto a whole thing over and over again where this woman who's gone die free uh, with her kids mm-hmm. uh, was talking all about it. And I was like, oh, maybe we should do that. Because I don't think it would be that hard if you started that way. Okay. And we're still early enough that I feel like we could really, the only things that I think we do that uh, have dye are fruit snacks. Oh, that's fair. Like there really aren't a lot of other. We'd have to look at some stuff because I, th- I bet there's dye in more than you think. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But I was looking at, she had linked a bunch of the dye free gotcha. options and items. And there, okay. There are a yeah. lot of. She's like, aggregated a lot of. Good, yes, a lot of the work. And a lot you. of the big brands actually make dye free versions of theirs. They're just harder to uh obtain. More of like a special Yeah. Okay. So sure. anyway, and I was reading about like why mm-hmm. going dye free is good. Um and then I gave my kid a peep. Yeah. In our defense, she has primarily had yellow peeps. Which are not which the do ones. not have red. Yeah. Purple and pink do have the red dye. Yeah. Think yellow's good. Pretty sure blue is good. Yeah, it's still all sugar. By good, I mean again. It's yes. all sugar and dye. It's not a health it's food. It's just not the red dye. Yeah, it's not the dye that is specifically that labeled they as no is linked to. That cancer. is a known carcinogen. Uh, okay, last article. Top four money mistakes people make in their forties. Oh, I don't think I saw this one. Yeah, oh, I want to read that for sure. I'm assuming That's he my sent kind it of because you know your sisters are closer to forty. No, I don't think that's no? why. I no? think he sent it to us because... We're so mature. N- well, <laughs> sure, you can think <laughs> about it that way, too. I think he sent it to us because if there are mistakes people make in their 40s, if we know about it in our 30s, then we can avoid it entirely. Then we can make new mistakes in our 40s. Exactly. Yeah. Found it. Boom. Boom. Yeah, exactly. We'll be making 60-year-old mistakes in our 40s. Heck, yeah. <laughs> I Ten steps ahead. will be going back to read that one. I didn't see that one. Okay. Did that come through recently? They were all pretty recent. Okay. I didn't see that last one. It does not give me any anxiety. Yeah. That I'm actually excited to read. It didn't give me any anxiety either because my 40s are a lifetime away. <laughs> we That <laughs> just happened the other night. I was talking with Matt. I don't... Oh, somebody was talking about turning 50 on a show that we were yeah. watching. And I looked at Matt. I said, can you believe that that's only 20 years away? And Matt <laughs> was like, 20 is a lifetime. Yeah. He's like, I can't even grasp... I haven't been alive for 20 the years. The idea of 20 years. <laughs> 
<laughs> to me, that seems like it's tomorrow. Yeah, you're, you're, like, that's you were like, not real. that's going to just go by. And I'm like, I don't disagree that it's going to go by fast. I also cannot concretely put together the idea. We'll be 50 and Matt will be like, no, that didn't happen. No, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, You could be like 35. Isn't that so close? And I'll be like, no. Mm, no. Funny. That's hilarious. And that's five years for me. All right. What's my word of the week? Word of the week. Word, word. I really wish we had little uh, sound bites to go over that weren't me doing that. Yeah. Because that's embarrassing. You want but... me to sit down? Whoa, 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 Record word some. Of the week. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be you. Just kidding. Mellifluous. What? I, I think I'm saying that right. I feel like the that... way you looked at me made me question if I even knew the word. Ma- mellifluous. Mellifluous. Sweet or musical, pleasant to hear. Mellifluous. I hate that. I think I'm it's like melodical kind that. of. That feels like a tongue twister that I'm going <laughs> to pronounce wrong and I'm not going to use in the right context and then people are going to make fun of me. Mellifluous. Slow it way down. Mellifluous. Mellifluous. Yeah. I hate that does not feel right coming. That feels dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate that coming out of yeah, my it's mouth. It's talking about like a voice or words or mellifluous. sound. Oh, I hate Sweet that. Sweet or musical, pleasant oh. to hear. So you don't find the word mellifluous. No, I mellifluous. don't like it. Never say it again. <laughs> I hate it. Interesting twist on word of the week. <laughs> oh, Love I, that. I really don't like that. Do you want to hear a fun fact as a palate yeah. cleanser? Did you know in Switzerland that you can't own one guinea pig? Because they're a social animal, it's illegal. Oh, wow. You have to own multiple. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. I like that they did that. It's a weird lot of me, but yeah. Well, I think that if they are miserable alone and they're social animals, why would you force them to live alone? It's like our dog. Yeah. Our Oko. dog should never yeah. be alone. Boji could be alone. Oko can't make Oko's it. Oko's been a real under the cover boy. He sleeps under the covers. He's a weirdo. Yeah, but he's been like really aggressive about it the last couple nights. Well, he wants to be under the covers. He wants to be under the covers and pressed against my body. He was pressed against me last night. He was so hot. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. I woke up a couple <laughs> nights ago. And it's I like had, putting an easy bake oven under the bed. <laughs> I had Boji on one side of me and Oko all the way alongside my back, arms up like he had his paws up at my shoulders. And then his bottom leg stretched down all mm-hmm. the way. Like he was across it's my... So he can get his extra hot belly all over all you. All the way down. Yeah. yeah. And then since Boji was in my front, I was 275 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did I die? And I've Is poorly shaved him recently. Yeah. And so I think it's just... We don't have the, the fur and the matting to, to insulate us from his heat anymore. I need and so he presses up. just his, his red hot belly against us. Oh it's, my gosh, guys. I'm so terrifying. sorry about all these yawns. Yeah. It's bad podcasting. I'm on my yawn game. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Okay. I'm going to pull up voicemails. Okay. Voicemails. Voicemails. This is the part of the podcast voicemails. where we listen to your all voicemails you do is party and all answer night. them, hopefully. Voicemails. I hate myself. (laughs) Here we go. Hi, Matt and Joe. It's Jess from Victoria, BC. Love you guys. Love your podcast. I follow you both on Instagram. You guys are amazing. Um, So my question is basically kind of about how to manage a new-ish relationship. Um, My boyfriend and I met... Um, almost a year ago, um, when we were living somewhere else and we've both returned to school and he's living in Vancouver and I'm in Victoria and we both really want to, we want our relationship to go somewhere. We're both working at it really hard right now. We're long distance. Um, but I guess my question is. How did you know you were ready to prioritize your partner and your relationship, not over everything else, but along with everything else? Love you guys so much. You're great. Thanks again. That's a great question. Yeah, it is. That's a really good question. So It's kind of a tough one to answer. To summarize what she asked, Yeah. Uh, the question is, at what point did we know that we wanted to prioritize our relationship over mm-hmm. 
other things. I guess I know she said not number one, like, you know, yeah. but to me, I think there comes a point where it becomes your number one priority is being with that person. And then, but you guys have to both have that priority, I think is the important thing. Well, and distance, distance adds a, I don't want to say urgency to that, but it, it ratchets up the priority because it means if you're going to continue long term, it's highly unlikely that you're going to continue long distance. Right. You're trying to consolidate your life. Eventually you want to yeah. be together. Yeah. You want to be in the same place. Uh, I, I don't know. I think that there just came a point for us where both of our priorities that we wanted to do life with one another. And so mm -hmm. there was a lot of discussion about what our goals and aspirations were. And I think that as you get to the right point, it kind of naturally happens that all of a sudden your goals and aspirations, since you know that you both want to be with one another mm -hmm. and be in the same place, they start to grow into one another. If you guys are on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Within some context. Cause you know, whenever we were long distance, Matt was living in St. Louis, Missouri. I was in Northwest Arkansas, which are about five and a half hours apart. Yeah. And we were looking at where we wanted to live. And I knew I didn't want to live in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a line for me. And Matt wasn't dead set on. I wasn't tied to St. Louis. No. Being there. I had uh, a job that I liked but didn't love. Yeah. I just didn't. The community in St. Louis didn't speak to me the way others did. And no, and you rooted didn't have a business as much here. Community there, I know, yeah. but I didn't just look here. Sure, we uh, we decided on uh, really two different cities. Matt was applying in Kansas City, Missouri, which is about three hours from Northwest Arkansas and three hours from where we grew up. Yeah, uh, and then Northwest Arkansas, and then you also applied for a few jobs in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, I guess I did. But I I don't think our plan was to necessarily no, move to Oklahoma. No. If anything, Oklahoma would have just gotten me closer, closer or close enough uh, that yes. we can maybe live together. And so Kansas City was kind of our compromise because yeah. Matt finding a job in Northwest Arkansas was really hard. He couldn't necessarily... There weren't as many job opportunities where I wanted to be for him. Yeah. And so we compromised. And so I, I think, you know, you're ready to make those steps when those compromises start to feel natural and like a win for both of you. So for me, mm -hmm. if Matt would have found a job in Kansas city, I would have had to move my business three hours away, but that would have been a win because it would have meant moving our yeah. lives forward together, you know? Yeah. And it would, I mean, in that case, it wouldn't have been so far that you couldn't have, continued work in the area right which to me was the compromise yeah you know that's where yeah. that comes in where you're you're still considering both of you and both your goals and dreams but finding where can we best shape both of us yeah yeah i just to kind of put a bow on that i think it's where the alternative options to your relationship don't outweigh it yeah and that's just the easiest way to sum it up is you don't feel like you're losing out on your opportunities mm -hmm. more than you will be gaining. Yes. And it, that's an individual thing. There's no like, do this checklist. If it works, great. If it doesn't, keep doing your thing. I don't feel like there was a single moment with us where I was like, okay, I'm ready to, you know, and now we do this. I think it just kind of slowly evolved over time. Yeah. You were also relatively clear about a timeline. Yeah. And that's, I, I think with long distance, we've said it before, a timeline is important. I'm a five and 10 year plan, girly. You are. Not, not the way I think. I could be think... dead in, in five months. So, but I, I'm don't not good at five say and 10. That. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want that I, to be true. I don't mean that I have everything planned down to the second. I just have general goals and aspirations. No, of... and you update your five year plan every like 15 days. So, I feel like. I try things out and it doesn't always work out yeah. how I want it to. And if it doesn't, I'm like, let's pivot. You're very adaptable, but yeah. you are always thinking. When Matt says I changed two, my four, plan. Two, four, six, eight years in advance. I, I just feel like whenever you say that, maybe this isn't, is probably not how people receive no. it. 
But to me, I feel like what you're saying is one day I'm like, I'm going to live in Northwest Arkansas. And then 15 days oh, later, no. I'm like, all right, I'm going to live in Hawaii. And then no, 15 no, no, no. days later, I'm like, I'm going to live in New York. No, you're just very adaptable. Yeah. You're not tied to a five-year plan. Right. You go where it takes you, but you're always thinking in advance. I think I, I think it's great. I don't have that same uh, I'm wiring. I'm self-conscious about it. No, I can see that. <laughs> but I think I think you do a beautiful job of it. I uh, I need that. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's a balance. Yeah. I'm like a five to ten minute plan guy. You're not even that. No. But. I would love <laughs> to see what your you've ten ever minute plan. planned. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what I. Go ahead. Lay out your ten minute plan. To I me. don't have one. That's the problem. I know. Exactly. Yeah. That's when you're like, I'm a five to ten minute plan. I'm like, what are you planning to do after this? <laughs> a shower probably. Cool. Yeah. But like I probably. It's not a hard. It's not. <laughs> Is that because I said that I wanted to shower after I was done Kinda, with the podcast? Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's not even your five to ten minute plan. That's my five <laughs> to ten minute plan that you just repeated. Guys, I need her really badly. Yeah. <laughs> She's really important to me. <laughs> just logistically. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. We have well, that was one, one, one voicemail. That went smoothly. One more voicemail. Hi, Joe and Matt. My name's Alma. I'm from Ohio. And first of all, I love your podcast. I've listened to every episode as well as Middle Ground Podcast. Just well, all around love you. your um, curated little happy corner of social media. And so I, yeah, I love all your guys' content and am grateful for it. Um, but I just finished listening to your episode where you like introduced your dogs and talked about puking. And huh? I thought it was so funny because when you were describing your dogs, it felt like you could be describing my dogs. I also have an older girl dog. I have two mini dachshunds and my older girl dog is named Paisley and she is better behaved than my younger boy dog but when she misbehaves it's on purpose and vengeance usually it's hilarious mm -hmm. um and then my boy dog is named Pax and he does he also I would say is like the dumbest dog in the world <laughs> yeah. so I thought it was so funny when you were talking about Oko and Boji and it made me really curious if that's a common like if that happens when people have two dogs and there's like an older and a younger one, I thought that was interesting that it's the same dynamic. Um, and then also when you were talking about puking, I could not relate more. Like I never puked before I got pregnant and now I'm like finishing out the first trimester. It ended. Well, good for you finishing out the first trimester. Uh, why did it end? I don't know. Did it actually end, or did yeah. just the? I don't know what. Is there like happened. a voicemail after that? That's like, what I'm gonna go maybe look. Maybe out. It... Uh, is, is there a hard cap on the voicemail length? Maybe, and we just learned. But I feel like <laughs> there have been ones that are. It wasn't. Um, guys, we're learning all about this right now with you live. <laughs> I mean, it was a long, a long voicemail. Yeah. Huh. I don't know, guys. Okay, but I am gonna respond to that. Yeah. Because sorry, I don't know why it did that. It, oh. There's not a cap because we've had them longer. I just looked. Okay. I don't know what happened, but maybe she just like. I hope you're okay. She was like, I made, it, <laughs> I made it through the first trimester and then just hung up. Like that was it. Uh, I hope you weren't driving not. and something tragic happened. Oh my gosh! Don't say that. that. Oh really my gosh! Dark. Call back. If you listen to this episode, please call back and let if us you're know with you're us. okay. Um, yeah. I getting not sick in the first trimester. Well, I got sick all the way through my second trimester. Yeah. It was horrible. But about the dogs, I want to go back to the dogs mm -hmm. because I don't know if we can trust the people that we, where we get our <laughs> dogs about having any kind of education on this. Oh, well, they're lovely. No, I don't mean I that think they're they not, know their stuff. I, I think they know their stuff about. You don't think they're dog scientists. <laughs> Correct. Got it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think they are great ethical breeders uh -huh. who mm -hmm. are lovely and they have an incredible well, operation. Well, I think they're seasoned and they know very much. Yes. But the reason we got a boy dog second is because they recommended that if we had an older girl dog, that getting a boy second was the right move with the breed that we have because they tend to 
kind of follow the older dog's lead really well. Can't speak to the dumb part. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the the intelligence I don't know that was correlated. I think we just got a dumb one. Yeah. But yeah, that was definitely they were like Especially since they, they neuter them very young. Yeah. So, so I, I think that that's probably a small dog thing. It is a small dog. You don't want to do it with bigger dogs because then they it need can, to develop and grow. And it can impact their uh, growth and stuff. But with their it health. depends on the it depends it, on it all varies, different but things. Regardless, our dogs and probably dachshunds. Maybe I, have no idea. I, w- I, don't I would know guess just dachshunds. as another small dog. If they're neutered, they're neutered relatively young, young as compared to like a lab or something that they don't a neuter lot until of labs after and one stuff, or they two. wait until yeah. they're like one or two. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Regardless, I don't know that you can guarantee that they're dumb, but no. <laughs> I think that there's something about the older sister, little brother dog dynamic. Yeah. The, the females in charge. Yes. Very. And much. they were like, yeah, you can get a female, but they're going to fight for dominance. Yes. And the boy They said is one ch- will win, usually. Yeah. yeah. And then like, that one will be in charge. Yeah. But if you get a boy, they're like... They're like, nah, I'm good. Right, she's in charge. Got I it. I mean, look at Matt. He doesn't even have yeah. a five to ten minute plan. I'm not even neutered. And <laughs> that's... Yeah. I'm still growing. <laughs> <laughs> oh Clip that. my. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put that on social. <laughs> Today's episode brought to you by. I don't what, have is there anything. a sponsor that neuters dogs or people? <laughs> I was thinking it was brought to. By, Birth control? By, Trojan? By me yawning oh. and crying. Yeah, at that your is, jokes. but they don't pay us. Yeah, that's No, just, I don't pay us anything. Well, no, you pay us, yeah, everything. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> it's sponsored by you, I guess. True. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. This whole podcast sponsored <laughs> by Joe. <laughs> Oh my god. What goodness. an unhinged voicemail well, response. I know. Well I'm I hope s- you're alive. I'm still sad that it cut out. I yeah. did I just looked and we had that are it that's not I hope you stopped throwing time. up. Yeah. Yeah. And if you had a question at the end, I hope you call back and ask us it. Yeah. We're sorry. I don't know what happened. I don't either. Maybe your phone just, you know, lost service. Or died. Or died. Like battery-wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. As someone who operates her phone regularly on like 2 to 5% charge. Yeah. It me. Anything under 10%, I'm like scrambling for a, a Your charger. Your phone the other day was at like 3%, and I was very... Con- I wasn't upset. It didn't uh-huh. bother me, but I was like, weird. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like calling him out and being sassy about it, but I didn't. Yeah, know. but you didn't know where a charger was, because that's not your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like... the fu- Okay. Funniest thing about Matt mm-hmm. is Matt has a total of like two things that are truly his mental labor, like a hundred percent his mental labor, and he will bitch about it to his grave. Yeah. And one of those is chargers. Well, I'm sorry, when you ask me where the camera is, and I know where it is, one. Also, I know where lots of things are in our house. But that doesn't mean that that is your sole mental labor and responsibility. Well, you don't know where they are. No, that's true. Matt, how many times a week do you ask me where your wallet is? How many times do you know? <clears throat> None. It's rhetorical. I literally told you where your wallet was today. Okay. You know, even a even a broke clock is right twice a day. So. Guys, <laughs> Matt and I are about to fight it out on this podcast. That's what our Patreon episode is. We just How funny would that be? If we just fight? <laughs> And just have a, have a, <laughs> anytime we get in an argument, we just turn on the mics. I that don't would know. probably help me. I, it would absolutely help you. Yeah. But I could never I think, actually publish that. Yeah, I think it would slow you down. Oh, it would you'd absolutely think slow me down. Yeah. You would all of a sudden feel like you had to say things because you'd be embarrassed. <laughs> I'd be doing it for content. Right. Matt would be embarrassed because what happens when we argue with each other is Matt just doesn't say anything. I just check out. I'm like, I'll mentally come back to this in when, when we're not 15 fighting. minutes and I think it'll be over. <laughs> and so <laughs> if we had to do it on video, you'd have to talk. Oh. She's getting ideas. No, I'm not. I'm not. No. Gonna, I'd rather. <laughs> cause Maybe I, it's just really expensive. What? It's like $75 a month. <laughs> 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 to, to be in on the most intimate arguments of our lives it's couples therapy yeah yeah that's the 
that's actually one of the funnier things that it's not the said. worst idea i've ever it, had it, oh no <laughs> 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 if that's the bar no i thought you were just gonna say it's not the worst idea and i was like it's also not no, the worst idea it's really bad it's not the and worst idea the disagree worst idea you've had you actually well, don't really have that yeah. many. I couldn't no, name I have a great bad ideas. idea that you have. See? Exactly. But that's because you only bring like great ideas to the well, table. Well, I was going to say, you don't really say anything. Like, I really. Unless I think it's a good idea. Right. I put things out there, even if it's horrible. That's like, true. What if we. Dogs in, with wings. Yeah. <laughs> what if we. What about it? Dogs with wings. Matt's like, n- that's no not on possible. every level. I'm yeah. like, okay, I just thought I'd pitch it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're not afraid to pitch bad ideas. I'm not. I'm afraid to pitch anything except a bulletproof idea. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Just who we are. You're special that way. All right. Well, rate, review the podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel. House questions. Hit us up with house questions. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing the home series. Yeah. We would so. love to love to make sure that we incorporate ideas from you guys. Yeah. And we love you guys. I already said rate and review. Email us. Matt loves your emails. Yeah. Yeah. Let you guys write longer stuff. Yeah. We enjoy that. And Somebody uh, reviewed us episode by episode. I know. I want read that you didn't send that for me to read that. okay i'll forward that to you okay all right well, you also have access to that email by the way oh well, that's good to know yeah i need to look up how to do that i'm not good at that thing yeah okay well on that note love another you guys. thing i'm solely responsible for yeah that's three things guys go, matt go matt, finding things is not a thing <laughs> chargers <laughs> oh you said two oh. you said there's two things i know what are you counting as your second thing or is uh, your third cleaning thing? the kitchen I help with that, though. You are not soul. Do you help with it? On couples therapy. Come <laughs> <up>. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>